one of the things that keeps coming up is there was a period where you could be have a last mover advantage. Like, you know what, I'm just going to wait and see how it all falls out and I'll go with the winner because, you know, I want to end up with Ford and right now there's a hundred car companies. This feels like this moment, if I'm not a first mover, then everybody's going to get ahead of me. So I let's start with that because really the model you have is you work with other companies that that's what collective eye is right you have yeah. so what what are you seeing in terms of where the dumb money is going or the questions that you're getting around that decision point of where do i what do i invest in do i let chat gpt in the door and i'm good to go yeah look uh, i understand why in it's 30 scary. seconds or less i'm just kidding okay. <laughs> okay i understand why people are scared it the world that they know has completely changed this might be the most disruptive thing that's ever happened in humanity beyond Sputnik, beyond the discovery of you know, the hydrogen bomb, all of these things. And the reason why is for the first time, there's a cognitive super intelligence in every field. And we don't know if it's gonna take us over or we're gonna work with it. And I think it's more likely the latter, but that means we're changing everything we did. Right. That's something that people can't get their arms around. Everyone thinks back to the old technology paradigms of if and then. If yeah. this happens, do that. And so everyone looks at ChatGPT or some of these other things and say, oh, I'm gonna take exactly what I used to do and increment on it. So let's think for a second. The most disruptive technology that's ever hit humanity and everyone's thinking about how do I incrementally improve what I'm doing? By that, I mean like, for example, my customer service operations, oh, yeah. how do I you know, use AI to better chat bots? Like what are we doing that is um, almost pedestrian in terms of the potential? Someone comes in, let's use that as an example. Someone says, hey, I've got a problem with my product. And they're like, great, I can now get rid of a low, uh, uh, an expensive person and you have a machine do it and do it great. Fine, that's an interesting thing, but what happens if it's able to actually solve the problem from beginning to end? Or what happens if it starts spotting that you're having problems and actually just solves it for you? Is that not you? a good thing? It's an amazing thing, but no one's thinking that way. They're all thinking, how do I use this in my current way of working? So it's an innovator's dilemma. I don't want to disrupt my business model too much because that's the other interesting challenge. There's the homegrown technology, and then there are the, you know, the bards of Google, the open AIs, you know, with Microsoft where they've invested all that money, but it feels like you're letting a lion into your den to yeah. train it in what you do. And I think that's going to be the hardest thing for CEOs today. One, they're thinking too small. How do you solve that? They're gonna have to bring in someone who knows this stuff onto their boards because they cannot figure this and, out. And are, is it a misplaced fear to be worried about training an, uh, an algorithm to do what you do? Because for, in all honesty, companies like Grammarly, uh, Jasper, I mean, there there's a real sense that they are disrupting themselves by using third-party technologies. Some of them, in their world, they were a language model without realizing it and then they didn't invest. I think a lot of people didn't believe this stuff because if you looked at GPT-1 or any of them, BERT, any of the players, out, they were not great, right? Like a child, they were kind of funny, mm -hmm. right? And like a child, they were learning. It's designed off of our brains. And as they started getting better, they went from, you know, the kid who used to be next door, who used to say some funny stuff to all of a sudden he's going to college and he's okay. And then all of a sudden they're amazing. And it came out of the blue for them. And now for a lot of those players, they were late. They did not invest the dollars to build their model. And now they're gonna hope for what? Hope, a llama too, you know, hoping that, that Facebook saved them mm -hmm. because they're not gonna train OpenAI, but it's too late. OpenAI didn't need them for that. So I think in one sense, CEOs are thinking far too small and they're thinking with fear as opposed to opportunity. So they're not saying, how do we disrupt our whole business? How do we do something before somebody else does it to us? The second biggest thing, is they have to decide who their partner is if it's friend or foe because deep learning requires more data to make it work in its current form today than any company has on its own so our model you mentioned every company that joins us is contributing to the knowledge pool that the ai is using but in our case we're when we don't compete with anyone so thank god but two we're personalizing insights back to each individual user so it's all different so